Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about Color Fab Lightweight PLA HT for high temperature resistance. So, how do you print it? And how does it compare to other materials? And can it beat the heat? Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check out our website for this model and others, as well as printing configurations for different materials. Also, I'm not associated with ColorFab in any way. I just like their materials. ColorFab was one of the first active foaming lightweight PLAs. There are several copies, but they mostly work the same way. The filament melts and expands in the print nozzle due to a foaming agent. The amount of foaming changes with temperature, and with these lightweight PLAs, at 150 degrees C nozzle temperature, the material doubles in size. Or you only use half as much material for the same size part, which equals less weight. For regular foaming lightweight PLA, the 250 degrees C is the sweet spot for maximum foaming without overcooking the material, but other densities are possible. With the right settings, parts can be printed like this wing panel, which is half the weight of the same panel in regular PLA. However, PLA is not known for handling the heat. PLA has one of the lowest heat deflection temperatures of the basic materials. And in a hot car, even PETG may sag. And melting is a terrible way to ruin a plane. But there is hope. ColorFab released this HT material in 2022. Similar to their regular active foaming lightweight PLA, but formulated to have a higher heat deflection temperature. I don't know what they changed in the material recipe, but the filament does come with a premium and has been expensive to get in the U.S until recently with their new direct U.S. warehouse. It is still more expensive than regular lightweight PLA, but you don't have to pay shipping from Europe. Comparing the technical data sheets, the heat deflection temperature after printing is the key property. For the regular foaming lightweight PLA, it's a low 60 degrees C. For the HT material, the heat deflection temperature after printing is a whopping 135 degrees C. If these properties are real, then this ColorFab Lightweight PLA HT should outperform all the materials. Even the new Lightweight ASA everyone is excited about. There are some other differences, but the next big question is, how hard is it to print? To start, I'm using my Bamboo Lab X1C, Orca Slicer, and the Soarcraft test part available on the website. And I'm going to modify the Soarcraft Foaming Lightweight PLA configuration to start, using the recommended changes from ColorFab. And notice that even though this is high temp resistant material, it prints and foams at a lower nozzle temp than regular foaming PLA and does not require any special equipment like a heated chamber or filament drying. In Orca Slicer under the filament tab, I set the flow ratio to 0.5, the nozzle temperature to 235, and the bed temperature is already at 55. The foaming lightweight PLA process configuration is already set for slicing this part, but I'm going to change the seam position from back to nearest. It prints just a little bit better with these types of materials. And I use the cool plate with a good layer of glue stick. There are more elaborate ways to do this, but I thought I would just try it out. The print only takes 30 minutes and less than 3 grams of material. First part printed no issue. Easily came off the build plate. Not bad for a first attempt, but I knew I could do better. The hinge activated without much trouble, but the outer surface was not to my liking. The single wall should measure 0.42-ish, and the double wall should measure 0.8 millimeters, so the material is overexpanded. 
So you can go back to the slicer and lower the flow ratio or lower the nozzle temperature, but only one at a time. Reducing the flow ratio 5% did not have much effect on the surface finish or the thickness. But dropping the nozzle temperature 10 degrees to 225 worked great. Nice outer surfaces, proper wall thicknesses, and the carbon easily slides into the channel. Good enough to start printing some real parts. A premium printer like the Bamboo X1C is not required to print this material. With the right settings, the ColorFab HT material easily printed on my bed slinger Bamboo A1, and I got good results with a nozzle temp of 215C. Not what I was expecting, but I will investigate it more in another video. So for this challenge, I'm only going to compare these three materials. Overture PLA Pro, Bamboo Labs PLA Aero, and the ColorFab Lightweight PLA HT. I printed identical parts with the different materials, a Pica V-tail fin, and an MH32 wingtip. And I used my published settings that I usually use for good parts. So the regular lightweight PLA parts are about 43% the weight of the PLA Pro, and the lightweight PLA HT parts are 49%, a 6% difference. However, the lightweight PLA HT parts were noticeably stiffer than the regular lightweight PLA parts, more than the 6% weight difference. Not stiff like the PLA Pro, but noticeable. I wanted to quantify this, so I built a simple bending force tester where I can measure a load at a given deflection. It's not perfect, but it'll give me a way to compare. Still just an approximation, with the only variable being the material. It's also meant to be non-destructive, so I could possibly use the parts, or be able to run the test again. There are lots of ways to use this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So I ran multiple samples multiple times and I was surprised at how consistent the values were. So from the results, the lightweight PLA HT is 22% the stiffness of PLA Pro, which is about where it should be for 50% flow and that much foaming. The regular lightweight PLA being only 10% the stiffness is a bit of a surprise, but was consistent. I even tested three other brands of foaming lightweight PLA and got similar results. If you look at the stiffness to weight ratio, the ColorFab lightweight PLA HT weight penalty of 6% is worth it for double the stiffness. So lastly, we have the hot car test. We're already 10 minutes in, with a dashboard temperature of 59 degrees C. We have the PLA Pro, the lightweight PLA HT in the middle, and the bamboo arrow on the right. The PLA Pro is already looking a little saggy. The ColorFab HT and the bamboo arrow still look pretty good. So at 20 minutes, we're at 64C, and the PLA Pro is sagging in a big way. HT looks good, and the Bamboo Arrow is starting to droop. At 30 minutes, we're at 67C. The PLA Pro is pretty ruined. The ColorFab HT still looks pretty good. The Bamboo Arrow is droopy, but holding form better than I expected. So it's been over an hour and it was too hot for my thermometer. 71C is just too hot. So I checked the temps with my laser temp sensor. And all three were over 70C. The bamboo arrow fared better than expected, but was a little soft to the touch. The ColorFab HT felt fine. 
just like it was printed. And the PLA Pro was gooey soft. Back under the workshop lights, you can see the PLA Pro is well deformed. The Bamboo Arrow drooped or oil can between supports. And the ColorFab HT is as printed. It held up really well. Even though ColorFab lightweight PLA HT is more expensive than other similar materials, its superior temperature tolerance, ease of printing, and other desirable properties may make it worth considering for your next project, especially with the summer heat getting more intense. I really enjoyed using my new stiffness tester, and I look forward to more videos testing other materials and building more awesome flying airplanes. Please leave a comment and let me know what materials I should test. Thanks for watching and see you next time.